Missouri. A backyard brawl is brewing. Coming up next, we'll see who shows the way in the Show Me State. This is Trucks and Tractor Power, featuring the all-stars of the Panda Monster Truck Thunder Drag Series. Today, it's the Penda Monster Truck Thunder Drag from the Ozark Empire Fairgrounds in Springfield, Missouri. Earlier today, our staff had a chance to visit the beautiful countryside here in the southwestern quadrant of the Show Me State to give you these beautiful pictures. It's a rare treat indeed for us to go out and have a chance to see the countryside around the racetrack because usually the crew is right here in the remote truck getting ready to show you the very best in monster truck racing, side-by-side -side mud racing, and of course, tractor pulling. Hi everybody, I'm Gary Lee and welcome to Trucks and Tractor Power. Now, the crew is not the only group of individuals that enjoy night racing. The drivers love it as well. It's cooler at night, more humidity, and of course that combination produces more horsepower. The drivers also like this racing facility as they have some very nice things to say about this racetrack. And here with more on that is my colleague, Army Armstrong. Gary, even though the tracks all look the same as we go around the country, the drivers tell me that you do have to learn little idiosyncrasies about each track you run on. So we asked the guys in the pit area, tell me about what's unique on this track. This is what they say. It's a roll and throw track. you got to roll the three car jump on the starting line. And then when you roll that one, you can put your horsepower down in the area I'm standing in now called no man's land. But when you get to the other end, that's the throw part. You literally got to roll and throw if you're going to win in Springfield, Missouri. Back to you, Gary. And Army, a good example of that technique took place in qualifying by none other than Andy Brass laid down the quickest run in Wildfoot. Yeah, if you'll notice now, you hear him back out of the throttle after that first roll part, and then when he throws it, he goes into the throttle. Well, that roll and throw can also throw you a curve, as Andy's teammate Dan Ruddy shows us in qualifying. Dan, who is still subbing for Gene Patterson, was the second quick qualifier on the day. Now, notice right here that pop as he backfires the Ford Bigfoot. That could indicate some type of a major timing problem. We'll have to keep our eye on that situation. Well, this is a view from one of our in-car cameras today. It's inside the cab of Fred Schaefer's barefoot truck as we get a bird's-eye view of the roll and throw. And coming up, another great view from a camera that we like to call the Crush Cam. This is from Dan Runte's first pass in qualifying, and that's exactly why it's called the Crush Cam. Now, Don Van Lue comes out in the Magnum Force Dodge in the near lane, and he also takes a shot during qualifying. These drivers are getting a roll and throw down, but they're still hitting a ton on the end of the track, Gary. Well, Army, later on in round one, Don would meet up against Wayne Smozanic in Tropical Thunder, and Don and the big Dodge would continue the winning ways that he has developed. Of late, boy, he is on a roll. He has found the combination he's been looking so hard for for about a year and a half, Gary. Also in round one, Ken Deffy in the Dodge Express taking on Brian Welsh in moving violation and Deffy in another of those potent Dodge pickups. And he takes that victory. Also advancing from round one would be Colt Cobra and Snakebite. Colt would take out Ron Nelson who's driving for Scott Stevens in the Auto Value King Crunch Chevrolet. But the untold story in this round as we get ready to go into round two is that every winner in round one came out of the far lane. That will not happen again, Gary. Somebody's got to go in the other lane. Yeah, we'll see if we can break the curse of the near lane as we come back to the Show Me State for more on trucks and tractor power. Stay with us. Field, Missouri for the Penda Monster Truck Thunder Drags. Gary Lee alongside Army Armstrong, who's standing by trackside with a preview of round two. Gary, we just noticed something interesting as we're getting ready to go into the next round of competition. It's a little three on three and believe me detroit mission is going to be watching this one because the old saying you win on sunday you sell on monday well that's where we are right now but the three on three i was talking about if you look over my left shoulder three ford trucks you look over my right shoulder three dodge trucks this is what's going down in the second round them guys are going against them guys back to you gary okay chevrolet are you watching as we take a look at the uh, bearings here wildfoot against magnum force dodge express and barefoot and snakebite will take on Bigfoot. Three Dodges and three Fords. So this should be a very interesting shootout here in Springfield, Missouri. Well, Don Van Lu pulls up in Magnum Force representing the Dodge camp. And he'll go up against the Ford camp's wild foot with Andy Brass. Gary, this is the reason that qualifying is so important because you always go back to your previous round, whether it be a round of elimination or a round in qualifying for lane choice. If you're quicker than me, 
you get lane choice. Andy the man Brass is quicker than the Dodge, so where is he going? Far lane. But we'll go back to round one now as he took out Mark Hall in the Executioner. Look what lane he's in. Now he's in that far yeah, lane. And he's building the nest over there, and I don't blame him a bit. And look at the suspension travel on that wild foot board. Mm. What a work of art as we take a look at Don Van Lue out of Jefferson City, Missouri. Not really that far from St. Louis where Andy's from. Oh, and this is the community that has so many monster truck drivers there. I think they're like nine trucks based out of Jeff City. But right now, he's got his heart, mind, and everything full of a big Ford called Wildfoot. He knows he's got a handicap lane. Well, with a handicap lane, he takes the uh, truck over the crush cam, and Andy Brass takes the victory in the Ford. So the Ford advances. And we'll have to wait and see if, uh, by chance, Don Van Lue would be the fast loser that he also could advance. Well, as the replay comes up on the screen, I want you to notice the headlight or the light in the middle of the driver's compartment. That's the indication we've talked about before in other shows of the electronic kill switch that's operated away from the monster truck. It's a safety feature, and that light in there with the driver is an indication of which channel, in this case the yellow channel, that, that particular truck is running on with his kill box. Well, as Andy Brass pulls back to the paddock area, we'll take a look at uh, Fred Schaefer coming up in barefoot, and here's what it looks like from inside the cab. We have mounted that camera right alongside Fred Schaefer, the ex-drag racer, and uh, this is going to be Dodge against Dodge because he'll pull alongside Ken Deppie in the Dodge Express. Now, this is going to be an interesting run because, well, let me give you, they both or Dodge Dakotas, okay? They're both red, but the truck you're looking at now, the engine is a little bit higher and forward. The Deppie's engine is to the front of the driver. Look at the engine right now below the barefoot truck. Fred Schaefer's engine is down and low as possible and to the rear. Deppie's engine is low, but to the front. Again, it gets to be a 10,000 pound balancing act. We go back now to round one action and uh, Paul Schaefer is in the Monster Patrol again in the near lane, but it's the far lane that takes the victory. Yeah, Fred Schaefer, Getting that Dodge truck balanced out, that's what bumped him over into this round. But All believe right. me, just because they're both Dodgers and they're both red, neither one's going to give up to the other guy. This Ken Deppie kid is going to be a player. And again, look where he's from. Very articulate. I'd like to hear you do the interview with Ken Deppie. I'd like to hear what he has to say. So here is a shootout between Dodge Dakotas, the Dodge Express, and Barefoot. Now Old remember, veteran. there's a possibility you could lose and win here. The way you do that is you're the quick loser in this round, and Dempy knows it. So he's running the other truck, but he's also running the clock. Oh, who's it going to be? It looks like maybe Fred Schaefer by, oh, a foot, maybe? Whew. That was some good racing, Gary. Oh, that margin of victory was minuscule, as it would appear that Barefoot did indeed win. But, hey, I tell you what, this Dempy kid could come back as the fast loser. That was a quick run. You're exactly right. I guarantee you, he was just trying to drive his race in his way going against the clock. Well, we take a look again. Watch for the margin of victory, how very small it is. But also, keep in mind, where has every win tonight come from? Far lane. It's getting closer, though, isn't it, Gary? Yeah, there's the margin of victory right there as we stop it. Now you're going to take a ride with the winner of this round, Fred Schaefer, into no man's land and settles down over the second set of cars, a rough landing. And let's uh, have some comments from Fred. I'll tell you what, Gary, if you thought either of these guys are going to roll over, that wasn't the case at all. Hey, you're both smiling. That was one race. Oh, thank you, Army. Uh, you know, we wanted to go as fast as we could because, uh, obviously, if one of us lose, we want to try and make fast losers, so I, uh, I think we both give it all we had. It's kind of strange how you got three Dodges and three Fours. Now, the Bigfoot crew, they're going to have to try to wipe somebody out. So, really, this race could actually be the quickest loser of this race still gets to stay alive. It's important, isn't it? Exactly right, Army. You got it around the nose. You learn anything from this guy? He's taught me a whole lot. He hired me to drive as fast as I can, and I'm not going to try not to let him down. He's earning his pay. Yes, he is. Thank you. Well, a pair of Dodges go out at that time. Now we have a pair of Fords. There's a look at Snake Bite with Colt Cobra out of Cobra Creek, Colorado, and he pulls alongside the big foot Ford of Dan Runty. And again, Dan subbing for Gene Patterson, who's taking a couple of weeks off after heat exhaustion. You talk about sitting in a hot seat. Gene Patterson comes over to take over for Andy Brass, a truck they knew was a world champion caliber, and Runty has to come in and take his place. And this kid is doing a yeoman's job. This kid's a good little driver. 